Some clients are so desperate to keep their natural nails that they do not allow to file them shorter. They just always want an overlay. So this client, she wanted to have a sharp square shape, but on some nails, the sidewalls or the corners are missing and we also have one broken nail. But I think we still can fix it if we're going to use some products for nail sculpting. Also, I'm going to do a cool and trending design. Let's get started. Hello guys, this is Anastasia. As usual, we're going to start with product removal. I'm using ceramic bead. The speed is 25,000 rotations per minute. One of the most common questions is why do I always do product removal with electric nail file? Why I cannot just do the sock off method? And you're right, I do not use this method very often. First of all, it's because it's taking longer. With filing off, it takes me around 5 to 10 minutes to remove nails, well, depending on their length and shape. If I decide to sock them off, then I need to file off the length, the top coat from the top, then we need to wrap them, wait for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then to slightly buff them. So in total, for me, it's definitely longer. Also, sometimes I use products that are not sock off, such as hard gel or poly gels, and in this case, we used hard gel previously so it's not possible to sock it off and finally the main reason is that when you do the product removal with electric nail file you can leave a thin layer of the old product if there is no lifting and discoloration and apply the new product on top and you definitely cannot do this with sock off method because it is going to melt the product all the way and you will need to remove it completely then we proceed with dry manicure. I'm using flame-shaped diamond bead. The speed is 15,000 rotations per minute. And then I trim the cuticles and eponychium, and there is a tiny bit to trim at this point with the manicure scissors. But for home use, DIY or beginner nail technicians, I would definitely recommend to use sock off method when you can, because it's much easier when you do not have enough experience with e-file yet. Just make sure that product you're working with is possible to sock off. So it's usually acrylic, gel polish, soft gel, or some poly gels also can be removed with the sock off method. But you always need to file off the top coat. Most glossy top coat cannot be socked off. And I also recommend to file a little bit of color too. By the way, this client has such a cute shape of her natural nails, so any shape will definitely suit her. But today we are doing this trending sharp square nails. This nail is broken, which means we will also need to do extensions on this one. When I'm done with dry manicure, I remove the surface shine and also I can remove some leftovers of the product. Like I said, it's okay if you have a thin coat of the product and it's not lifting. You do not need to remove it all the way. But after filing and shaping and prep, make sure that you get rid of all the dust and debris. Then we need to apply dehydrator, let dry and non-acid primer. Then a thin coat of the base coat and make sure that you don't have any empty spots. While this nail is curing, we can proceed to the next one, the broken one, and I'm going to use traditional forms to fit them and to do this little extension of the free edge. And we need to do the exact same prep for this nail, the hydrator, primer, and base coat. I prefer doing this after I fit the form, so I will be sure that I'm not going to accidentally touch it. After curing the base coat for 30 seconds, it's time to do extensions and we will be using a milky colored hard gel. First, I'm going to build the free edge. Recently, I was reading comments under my recent videos and I noticed that sometimes you guys ask me, Anastasia, why don't you do sculptured nails as much as you used to? And I noticed that it's definitely true. I mean, five, six, and 10 years ago, most of my work was sculptured nails with traditional forms. Then I tried doing dual forms, and now when we also have soft gel tips, probably I became lazy like some of the nail technicians, and I have to admit that I use them more often now. I guess that's what technology do to us, right? Whenever we have better tools and easier ways to get similar results, 
we just use them and actually I don't think it's a bad thing but on the other hand I'm really grateful that I know all these other techniques like how to use traditional forms how to use dual forms because whenever I'm dealing with non-standard situation let's say a client with a damaged nails or bitten nails or super short nails or something where I need to use a different techniques on one client it's really great when you know how to work with different products because you can definitely find the right solution for this exact case meanwhile i'm done with this nail where we did extensions and i would like to show you a simple technique of overlay with hard gel so after doing all the prep i'm going to take a hard gel that i'm about to use it's the same one milky gel i just used for extensions and I'm not going to apply it on the entire nail. I will only apply it to two thirds. So I will leave this little margin near the cuticle because my goal now is to build some extra strength on the free edge and on the apex only. Since this gel is rather thick consistency, it's pretty easy to do that. First, I added some product right on the free edge and along the side walls because they were a little missing. And with the gel, if you add some product and do not cure it right away, it may move a little bit. And then I added more on the top. Cure, take off the sticky layer, and now I'm going to file and shape it which means filing and shaping the free edge as well as underneath the nail. So it is going to look super thin, but it's still going to be strong and durable. Once we're happy with the length and shape of the nail, we need to clean the dust once again and add the product on the top. Lately, I'm really enjoying this technique because once you're finished with the shape and perfect sidewalls, you do not need to worry about it anymore. It's much easier to build this perfect structure on the top now that we have this flawless, smooth product underneath. Also, I'm not going to add much on the free edge anymore because we already have a product there. You can turn the finger around to make sure it's super symmetrical. And if you're using medium or thin consistency gel, then it is going to move pretty quickly. So once you're happy with the structure, we also need to cure it in LED for 30 or 60 seconds, depending on the brand you're using. That's it. Since we already did the filing and shaping, we don't need to do it again. Just make sure that the surface is clean because we are about to apply the color. Sometimes I push back the cuticles again just to be sure that it's totally clean and no little fuzz is going to be on my way as I apply the color. And we are going to use this beautiful blue color. Whenever I want to go closer to the cuticle, I can use a brush from the bottle or a detailer brush, which is much easier. When I'm dealing with clients with puffy sidewalls or deep cuticles, I always use this trick because it makes it so much easier. Then we need to cure the main color for one minute and I'm going to add some other colors. And it's important to use a dry brush and a tiny amount of the color. Now you can barely see any difference, but I'm going to use another color that is lighter and eventually you will see this look because denim fabric looks like this. It has this different shades of blue. Finally, I will add a little bit of silver and yes, it's totally fine to use your finger as long as you're wearing gloves. So I'm just taking a little bit of this stamping gel. It's super thick consistency. That's why I can even use my finger to do this. And then I'm going to do the same on the rest of the nail. So whenever you do a design like this, do not do each nail one by one. You take the silver stamping gel, you add it on all 10 nails. Then you cure one hand and while it's curing, you work with the opposite hand. Since we just used a large tool, which is my finger, it's important to clean all the surrounding skin before you cure it because we definitely don't want any cured product on the skin. And now let's add some lines. So our nails are going to look like jeans. For any designs that require small objects or super fine lines, I prefer to use a detailer brush and gel paint or a very high pigmented and preferably a thick consistency white gel polish. Don't add too many little details. Make sure that you have some empty spaces too. When you're done, we're going to seal it with a matte top coat and cure it in LED for 60 seconds. 
let's add some 3D accessories to this design, but they're going to be handmade too. I will use a 3D gel and first I kind of roll the dough, it really feels like cooking at this point, and cut it into small pieces. So this is going to look something like a button and we add it to the intersection of the lines. You probably noticed that I use my hands as the tool very often and yes, I do have this habit of touching the products, but once again, like I said, it's super important to do it in the gloves, wear them all the time. Even when I'm just playing around with the products, doing swatches, I always have them on to protect myself from potential allergic reactions. If you accidentally touch the product once or twice, nothing really is going to happen. But if you do it repeatedly for a long period of time, this is when problems may occur. Then we cure these cute buttons and let's make them metal. I'm going to use a silver stamping gel to do this, outline them, cure, and the design is ready. Let me guys know what do you think and thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post nail art tutorials just like this one every week. See you in my next one.